Hello, and welcome back to First Sound, a series at Inside the Pylon where the writers take you inside a scheme, a trait, or a concept using game footage to help illustrate the topic being discussed. My name is Mark Schofield, I'm one of the writers at Inside the Pylon, and I'm continuing my series on working progressions from the quarterback position. Again, this is the concept where a quarterback will have a series of options, progressions, or reads on a given pass and play. And what we look for is how the quarterback will move through that progression structure, move from one option to the next to the next. Different offenses structure it in different ways. Some teams base it on strong side versus weak side of the field. Other teams make the quarterback make a full field read from left to right or right to left. Other teams make you work from high to low. It depends, it, it depends on the offense. It varies from offense to offense. But what we're looking for is the ability of a quarterback to process information and move from one option to the next. It's important when evaluating quarterbacks with respect to the NFL draft because NFL teams and NFL offenses will ask quarterbacks to do this on virtually every pass and play. But in today's collegiate game, there are many offenses that give quarterbacks one or maybe one to two progression reads on a pass and play. And there are some offenses that just give the quarterback majority one read plays. And an interesting case study is the player we're looking at today. And that's North Carolina State quarterback Jacoby Brissett. Brissett runs an offense at North Carolina State that does incorporate a number of one read throws. And a prime example of that if you get a chance to look at their game against Virginia Tech this season, look at the very first play. It's a quick little short, flat route to the running back out of the backfield. But both receivers to that side of the formation are blocking as soon as the play begins. So it's clear as you watch it that this was a predetermined throw for Brissett. And that's where he goes with the football. And it goes for a big gain. But then if you continue with that game, they run it to open, I think, the second half or at some point early in the second half. And the Hokies are ready, and they stop it for no gain. But Brissett still goes right there with the football because it's predetermined. But when you dive into Brissett a little bit, even though you think he might be just a one-read type quarterback, there are times when he's asked to make progression reads. And this is one example, and it's an example where he does it very well. It's a play from their game against Troy this season. It's a play from the third quarter. As you can see, Brissett's alone in the shotgun. It's an empty backfield situation. They have 10 offensive personnel in the game, meaning one running back, four wide receivers, and the running back is to the slot to the right side of the field. There he is, to the short side of the field as well. Troy has their 4-2-5 nickel in the game. I want to talk about their cornerbacks for a second to give you sort of a sense of what Brissett's mindset is when this play begins. If you look at both cornerbacks, they're looking into the offensive backfield. We can even see the cornerback at the bottom of the screen. We can see his back. We can see his numbers. That's an indicator to Brissett when he looks out to both sides of the field before the play. They're not looking at their receivers. They're looking at him. That's a zone indicator to him. And he sees the free safety sort of in the middle of the field as well. Again, he's not down in the box. He's not really across from a man because that's the two receiver side. Another indicator that this is zone coverage. I'm going to pull up the offensive play art. As you can see on the left side of the field, the trip side, they run two curl routes, one from the outside receiver and one from the inside receiver, as well as a vertical release, a seam route from that middle receiver. Now to the short side, the right side of the field, that slot formation, we get what's called a two-man sail concept. You might call this, as Coach Mazzone does at the University of California, he calls it an Indy 5 concept. And what it is, it's a vertical route, a vertical route from this outside receiver here. He'll release vertically. And that slot receiver, in this case the running back, he's going to run that speed out pattern, sort of a five-yard quick out to the sideline. Now that's a great design against both man coverage because against man you might be able to get a, a play vertically with the wide receiver beat and press coverage on a vertical route or if that's somehow covered if this receiver here is matched up against maybe a safety or a linebacker you might get a nice little you know separate some separation on that speed out route working to the sideline of man coverage but if you get zone coverage particularly cover three it's an even better design because as this receiver releases vertically, he'll pull 
this cornerback with him. And what that does, as you might expect, it opens up this sideline for that speed out route from the slot receiver. So given that, if Brissett knows pre-snap that this is probably zone, and if he can confirm that it's cover three, and that's the short side of the field, it's a nice short throw as well, he'll likely open to the right side of the field first. There's the defensive play art that the that Troy uses, and as you can see, they do run cover three. The cornerbacks and the free safety drop into the deep third zones, and you can see the underneath defenders drop into zones as well. But I do want to focus for a moment on this weak side defensive end right here. As you can see, he doesn't rush the passer, but he drops into this hook zone. This is a concept that a lot of teams, especially at the collegiate level, are using these days, and you see it in Sundays as well. We have an athletic defensive end. You can drop him and help out in underneath zone coverage, especially when you've got an empty backfield. It just gives you an extra body to help in the secondary, and it's particularly useful against curl routes or, as we see here, that speed route that's going to come here and break out. So this is what we're going to see here. Now running through this, watch Brissett's head at the snap, right there. First thing he does, confirm the coverage. Checks that safety. And what's he doing? The safety's rolling to the middle of the field. Given everything that he now has to process, he now can confirm in his mind this is cover three. You saw the pre-snap indicators, and now that free safety's bailing towards the middle of the field. This is cover three. Now, like we talked about, that sort of two-man vertical route, speed route combination, great against cover three, and you can see it start to take shape on the bottom of the screen. Play side cornerback, releasing vertically. He's coming with that vertical route. So that means that this area of the field might be open. Brissett's expecting that to be open, but he doesn't know yet. He hasn't opened to the right side of the field yet, so he doesn't know about this guy, that defensive end who's dropping. But he will in a second. Right there. You catch that? He took one look to that side of the field. Right there. And now, with his eyes trained this way, he sees that defensive end dropping under that speed out route. Brissett's a guy that likes to make plays with his feet. So when I first watched this play, I was very interested to see what happened next. Because some quarterbacks, when they work through their first two reads, when you've got a read to one side of the field and you're an athletic guy, you might think at this point, let's just tuck it and run. You've got a three-man rush. You can probably make a play happen with your feet. But that's not what he does. Right there. He whips himself, his front foot to the left, pulls his field of vision to the left side as well to check out his options on the left side of the field, to the trip side of the field. And what does he see? He's got this curl route, which looks to be open from the angle that we have, but that's a long throw. Don't know if you really want to make that throw, especially in this situation. You're up in the third quarter. Why risk that? He's got the other curl route. That looks to be covered. Here's that vertical route. That defender might be playing sort of a cover three Mabel to that side of the field. A lot of teams that run cover three facing trips, they'll have that middle trips defender covered in man coverage from an extra defensive back. But these three routes, from what we can see at this angle, those look to be covered. Now is when Brissett starts to think about running the football. And again, this is I'm playing this in slow motion because this all happens really fast, so I want to make sure people are able to see the little head movements here. He tucks the ball a little bit, and he does have an alley here where he can make a play with his feet. But that's not what he does. Watch as we roll through this again in slow motion. He starts to run, but then pulls up. Because here he sees that defensive end is in the middle of the field. There's his running back, who's now open. And there's a clear throwing lane to get the ball out 
on what will be his fourth, fifth read at this point, and that's exactly what he does. Let's take a look at this kind of in real time, get you a sense of how fast he moves through these progressions here. Checks that. Finally comes back to that side of the field. Here you can see from this angle, now he's looking again to that slot receiver on that speed out route. I'm going to slow this down again so we can make sure we catch all of it. Doesn't like that, comes. Doesn't like that again. Starts to run but sees that come open late. Gets the ball out to his wide receiver, who is running back on that speed out route, who's able to make a play and pick up yardage after the catch. This is a very, I don't want to say this is a very impressive example. I think it's a very good example of what Brissett can do when asked to make and work through progressions. Again, there were times on this one play where it looked like he could have tucked the football and he almost wanted to tuck the football. But what I really like what he did here is that he didn't. He stayed with the structure of the play when he first saw that you know that two man sail route covered to the right he immediately came to the left side of the field he, he could have thought about running there but it, it, that didn't even cross his mind he whipped himself his body and his field division to the trip side of the field to pick up the three options over there none of them looked appealing to him from the angle that we have it didn't really look like any of them were open Maybe that outside curl route was kind of coming open, but that would have been a long throw. So that's when he starts to think about, maybe I should run the ball. He starts to tuck it, but then he keeps his eyes downfield. Doesn't drop his eyes, and he comes back to the original starting point, his original progression read. Notices that that defensive end who was dropped has stayed towards the middle of the field. He realizes that that speed out route is now open along the sideline, and he has a presence of mind to get the ball out to his running back on that out route along the sideline for a big game. This is a nice example of what Jacoby Brissett can do when asked to make progression reads. So when you're working through your evaluations and you're taking a look at Brissett and you're trying to determine whether he's a guy that can translate and transition well to the NFL, this is a play that I'd ask you to kind of take a look at when doing your work and keep in mind as you're writing up your evaluation number set. I think it's a nice little sort of one snap sort of you know, microcosm of what he can do at the quarterback position. For more on Jacoby Brissett or any other quarterback in this draft class, I'd invite you to take a look at InsideThePylon.com.